This video focuses on the behavior of functions and graphs as x goes through arbitrarily large positive and negative values. You may have touched on these ideas before in the past when you studied horizontal asymptotes, but in this video we'll talk about the same ideas in the language of limits. In this first example, what happens to the function f of x drawn below as x goes through larger and larger positive numbers? Well, the arrow here on the end is supposed to mean that the trend continues. So as x gets bigger and bigger, the values of y, that is f of x, get closer and closer to 1. We can write this in the language of limits by saying the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to 1. Now, what happens to this function as x goes through larger and larger negative numbers? By larger and larger negative numbers, I mean numbers that are negative but are larger and larger in magnitude. So, for example, negative 5, negative 10, negative 100, negative a million, and so on. Well, assuming this trend continues, it looks like f of x, even though it's oscillating, it's settling down at a value of 2. So we say that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals 2. Limits in which x goes to infinity or negative infinity are called limits at infinity. The phrase limits at infinity should be contrasted with the phrase infinite limits. An infinite limit means that the y values or the f of x values go to infinity or negative infinity. Limits at infinity correspond to horizontal asymptotes as drawn above, while infinite limits correspond to vertical asymptotes. The only exception to this when we don't have a horizontal or vertical asymptote is when x and f of x are both going infinite at the same time. We'll see an example of this on the next page. Let's figure out the limits at infinity for these two functions, g of x and h of x. The function g of x is actually the function e to the minus x, and it has a horizontal asymptote heading right here at y equals 0. So the limit as x goes to infinity of g of x equals 0. But as we head to the left and x goes through larger and larger negative values, our y values don't settle down to a particular finite value. They get arbitrarily large, and so we say that the limit as x goes to minus infinity of g of x is equal to infinity. Now let's look at the graph of y equals h of x. Please pause the video for a moment and try to figure out the limits at infinity for this function. The limit as x goes to infinity of h of x is negative infinity. Because as x goes to infinity, the y values get below or more negative than any finite number. Now as x goes to negative infinity, the y values oscillate and never settle down at a particular number. So we say that the limit as x goes to minus infinity of h of x does not exist. Finally, let's look at some limits at infinity of functions without looking at their graphs first. To find the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, let's think about what happens to 1 over x as x gets bigger and bigger through positive numbers. As x gets bigger and bigger, 1 over x gets smaller and smaller. So the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x equals 0. To find the limit of 1 over x as x goes to negative infinity, let's look at what happens as x goes through negative numbers that are larger and larger in magnitude. Now 1 over x goes through numbers that are negative, but they're still getting smaller and smaller in magnitude. So the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x is also 0. We can use similar reasoning to find the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x cubed. As x goes to infinity, x cubed also goes to infinity. So 1 over x cubed has to go to 0. To find the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over the square root of x, notice that as x goes to infinity, the square root of x still goes to infinity, 
so 1 over the square root of x also goes to 0. In other words, both of these limits are equal to 0. Both of these examples are actually closely related because both have the form of the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the r, where r is a number greater than 0. In the second example, the square root of x is really x to the r, where r is 1 half. In fact, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the r is always equal to 0, whenever r is bigger than 0. We can even say the same thing about the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x to the r. As long as we avoid exponents like 1 half that don't make sense for negative numbers. But for other values of r, as x goes to negative infinity, x to the r is getting bigger and bigger in magnitude. And so 1 over x to the r is getting smaller and smaller in magnitude and heading towards 0. Notice that this is no longer true if r is less than 0. For example, something like r equals negative 2, because 1 over x to the minus 2 is really x squared, and the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared is going to be infinity, not 0. In this video, we looked at examples of limits as x goes to infinity and x goes to minus infinity. And we saw that those limits could be 0, any other number, infinity, negative infinity, or not exist.